chocolate, and even that was sent surreptitiously. But high in the hills near Asmara, that's one problem that wasn't being discussed last month at the meeting of the EPLF's political bureau and central committee. The men who over the last 16 years have emerged as a driving force behind the front. Alamin Mohammed Saeed, responsible for the front's foreign missions. Haile Mariam, in charge of education. <laughs> Mohammed Ramadan Noor, the front's general secretary. Now we know that uh, according to our intelligence, uh, we know that the Ethiopians, uh, the plan of the Ethiopians, that after they have changed uh, the situation in Ogaden Front, that they are planning to uh, have or to concentrate on the uh, northern uh, uh, front. But uh, it's true, uh, it may have certain uh, effect in the situation, but this does not mean that it could uh, change the whole situation uh, against our uh, 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 against our just cause. Well, does that uh, mean that, as a as an army, that you are prepared and ready to face the full force of an Ethiopian offensive with its Russian tanks, planes, artillery? perhaps even Cuban combat troops. Are you prepared to face that? Yes, we are prepared and we are well... Uh, uh, we are well uh, uh, prepared and ready to face uh, uh, such offensive. And you and think you could contain it? Yeah, sure. Again, that film was done by the BBC and shown originally on its Panorama program. The reporter was Simon Drain. Now for some update perspective from an American congressman with a lot of knowledge about and interest in what's happening in Eritrea and Ethiopia. He's Congressman Paul Zongas, Democrat of Massachusetts. He was a Peace Corps volunteer in Ethiopia at one time and more recently visited Ethiopia as part of a congressional fact-finding mission to the Horn of Africa. Congressman, you and your colleague on that trip, Congressman Don Bonker, mm -hmm. said in January in an, the opening sentence of your report, and I quote, nowhere in Africa is there more potential for major instability and violence than in the Horn. And Eritrea was clearly one of the problems you had in mind, was it not? That's right. It was the obvious issue after the Ogaden. Yeah. Look, we just heard the Eritrean view of their situation. You've talked to the Ethiopians. Why do they feel so strongly that Eritrea belongs to them? Interestingly, during the film, the distinction between Ethiopia and Eritrea was made very clearly. To the Ethiopian mind in Addis Ababa and the rest of Ethiopia, Eritrea is perceived as a province, like Shor province or, or Desi province. The people speak Tigrinya, but there are Ethiopians who speak Galinya or Garagi, uh, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So it's not perceived as that different. They see them as brothers. They will never let them go. Much like a state of the Union in the United States? A good analogy. Yeah. All right, the rebel leaders, as we've heard, uh, as we just heard, uh, seem determined to, to, to fight apparently mm. to the last man, if, if necessary. Are the Ethiopians equally as determined? I think you'd have to draw a distinction between perhaps the average Ethiopian who would like to see, I feel, a kind of negotiated settlement, maybe a federation as they had at one point, and Colonel Mengistu, who's the head of Ethiopia, who I think has a mindset that dictates a violent approach towards the problems, and I think He's going in there, and he's going to go in there and try to put them down. Well, what is the, the likely outcome of this determination on, of the will of both sides? An awful lot of people are going to be killed? I don't see the way out. If Mengistu um, insists upon putting them down and, and bringing them back into Ethiopian camp, if the Eritreans believe in independence, which I think they do, it's going to be an attrition bordering on genocide. It's going to be a chapter in our history in, the in the, this year and next year, which would be very sad. Thousands of people are going to die then, at on least. both sides. You know. At least. Is a negotiated settlement really just not in the cards anymore? Back in 1974, General Amman was the head of the Ethiopian government who was from Eritrea. He tried to negotiate. He was overthrown by the Durek, the Yahunta. And at that point, when they killed him, they went into Asmara with the military and, and killed a lot of people. I think at that juncture, 
negotiations were out of the question, and it's going to be settled by violence. Now, you and, uh, and Congressman Bonker just today, in fact, drafted a letter uh, to the Ethiopian government pleading with them to negotiate. Uh, where does that letter stand? What do you hope to accomplish with that? I guess it's out of frustration. What do you do in this particular case? There really aren't that many options. And what we would hope to do is get a number of members of Congress to sign the letter. The showman gets to that the world is really looking at what happens in Eritrea. Mm -hmm. And uh, what good it will do, I don't know. Well, so far, the uh, State Department has uh, issued statements lamenting mm -hmm. what, what is happening there and what is likely to happen. Is there anything else that the U.S. really can do besides lament it? Realistically, um, no. Um, when the United States made the error of uh, not um, helping Ethiopia vis-a-vis -vis the Somali aggression, we pretty much canceled ourselves out of Ethiopia. We don't even have an ambassador there. We are in no position to have any influence on policy. Perhaps all we can do is help the Sudanese in terms of their problems and call attention to what's happening in Eritrea. Mm -hmm. But in terms of any viability, we, we just don't have it. So far, the wire reports say that there is no concrete evidence that those 17,000 Cuban troops that are in Ethiopia have actually involved in this fighting mm -hmm. in Eritrea. Is there really any way for them to avoid it down the line? I think Castro would be in a very difficult position putting his troops against what is essentially another Marxist government. It's an internal problem. Um, there are non-aligned countries like um, Algeria, Iraq, Syria who, that are putting pressure on Fidel Castro not to do this. So he's really caught in a squeeze, and he wants to be friendly with the Ethiopians, the obvious Soviet interest that's involved. But he's not going to come out of this looking good to the third world. Particularly because he's backing a, well, the, the Eritreans see themselves as, a, as an independence movement, right. and here he again he would be backing the other side. People switch sides on this very often. Yeah. Congressman, uh, this is a very uh, tragic story. There's no question about that. Uh, and there's really nothing, regardless of who's right and who's wrong, the fact is thousands of people are about to die, and there's really nothing that can be done about it. Is that what you're saying? What can be done is, um, is small things. Um, you're not going to have any kind of international intervention, clearly, because it's in within the borders of Ethiopia. Um, there's no way the Soviets are going to back down. I think it's going to be tragic. All right. Congressman, thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll be back tomorrow night. I'm Jim Lara. Thank you and good night.